Welcome to twocircles.net. Uh, we are here in Bangalore speaking to Mr. Akmal Razvi, the State Secretary of APCR Association for the Protection of Civil Rights. Uh, so, Akmal sir, uh, if, uh, let, tell us something about the APCR activities in, in like uh, fighting terror cases. Uh, like how how long how long have been APCR fighting terror cases, and what what are the particular cases that APCR fought can give the legal help to the victims? You see. APCR is basically working from 2008. Our main focus is to create legal awareness among the Muslims. Mm -hmm. In legal issues, especially when matters connect to arrest of people, just like in an accident, the first few hours are extremely critical. Similarly, in legal cases, especially when a person is picked up, the first five, six hours or 24 hours are extremely critical. The law of the land is that a person after he is arrested, the police officer arresting the person should inform the person who is related to the person who is arrested of why he is being arrested and where he is being taken. Unfortunately, uh, police normally doesn't follow this rule and therefore uh, they get an opportunity of planting evidence if immediate action is not taken. So APCR basically uh, teaches people these legal rights and ensures that they inform the appropriate authority uh, as soon as a person is picked up to avoid the eventuality of uh, uh, evidence being uh, framed and uh, planted. Okay. So any any particular uh, like the terror cases which you have been provided legal help to the victims? Oh, you see, uh, just because a journalist was involved, Mr. Muthi Rahman Siddiqui of the Ekane mm -hmm. that became uh, uh, very well reported in the media. Mm -hmm. But uh, APCR has been following on these uh, legal cases much before this. Okay. We are in fact following the and com counseling people, providing for their legal help, uh, ensuring uh, that they have access to legal help from the year 2008. That was the Hubli uh, conspiracy case mm -hmm. in which Dr. Asif and several others are still languishing in jail. Mm -hmm. It's rather unfortunate, but despite the orders of the High Court and the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. the case doesn't appear to be uh, moving. Okay. And it is stuck because I'm given, I'm, I've been just informed that uh, the video conferencing facility is not working. Okay. And some of the accused are in uh, Gujarat. Okay. So we, we keep a track of this and intervene wherever possible. Uh, the next best thing that has to be done throughout the country is that uh, the CRPC has been amended long back, but uh, most of the courts are not following this. In fact, the law now says that if a person has spent half the time he would spend in jail, for instance, a man commits a theft, it is punishable with three years imprisonment. And if he has spent one and a half years and the court is not yet and the court is not yet decided his case, then he is entitled to bail. If you actually follow 436A section 436A properly, uh, our jails which are suffering from overcrowding will become very manageable because um, many of the convicts are entitled to this bail and uh, lack of uh, information and lack of knowledge is is creating a havoc with the families of these accused who should be let out on bail. These majorly constitute the Muslims and the Dalits and we hope that uh, we will be able to soon uh, petition the Chief Justice mm -hmm. of Karnataka and request him that he should direct his officials that whoever is entitled to bail in view of the new amendment to the CRPC mm -hmm. gets bail. Okay, uh, so probably conspiracy ke, uh, is not the only case. You have also provided a help of Chinna Swami blast case. Uh, can you can you just tell us the details of that case and how you have? Chinna Swami case is being handled uh, by the uh, advocate for the accused, Mr. Mahmood Pracha from Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the accused uh, probably has contacted Mr. Uh, Narayan Das uh, Pancholi. Uh, who is the PCL president in, in Delhi mm -hmm. and uh, on his request we are trying to find out uh, how best we can uh, help him mm -hmm. in ensuring that the case comes to a, uh, a, a good and fair conclusion mm -hmm. and he speeded up. It's stuck in the, uh, it has not yet been committed, you see the case is still stuck with the magistrate who has no authority to try that case. Mm -hmm. It has to be tried by the sessions judge and uh, for that he has to pass a committal order. 
but it's taking some time because the accused are not able to be present here and some of the accused are in the hard jail and some of them are in uh, other jails so mm -hmm. therefore that's becoming uh, slightly difficult but we are still trying to see how we can ensure that this case uh, immediately goes up for uh, trial okay so coming to that bangalore like the conspiracy like uh, assassination conspiracy case uh, it's become a sensation in all over india uh, when it's become more critical when three of three or four years got uh, like uh, three of them was released without any charges so oh, you you fought those get that case in the court personally so can can you tell us uh, any like defaults in the police theory about that case you see, I'm, I'm, I was not the only advocate, please uh, you have to, uh, let me clarify this, mm -hmm. uh, there's a panel of advocates and Mr. Anis Ali Khan is the advocate of uh, Yunus Ali Khan Associates along with me in this and he is the lead advocate. Uh, I, as I pointed out earlier, it's the critical uh, first 24 hours which matter in this case and the local people had the courage to report to the police that uh, these people were picked up at 9 o'clock in the morning of the 29th of August mm -hmm. uh, and therefore the police had to produce them before the magistrate on the 30th and they did not get the opportunity of planting evidence mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that every policeman plants evidence mm -hmm. but uh, even if they had uh, planned to plant it they didn't get that time mm -hmm. and therefore there was no choice for them but to leave two of them not the three of them have not been acquitted two mm -hmm. of them has have been uh, released uh, they have not been sent up in the charge sheet for being tried Mm -hmm. The third person, though they did have not found any evidence against him, he is the DRDO scientist, mm -hmm. Mr. Ejaz Mirza. Mm -hmm. uh, though they have not found any evidence against him, they have requested the court for further time to investigate him further. So that's where the case stands against Ejaz Mirza. But the other two uh, are completely released and uh, there is no further trial that is going to be held for them. That is Muti and the other person. Mm. Uh, I have one question. What are the challenges that you face when you, you know, um, fight these kind of cases? Are there any threats that you receive or any kind of... Oh, I am uh, lucky and uh, uh, protected to some extent because I am a lawyer myself and uh, my position is that of an officer of the court. But of course our organization secretary has uh, had severe problems. Mm -hmm. He was first uh, received a threatening call from a Sangili police station okay. and then uh, we had to file a police complaint uh, against the Sangili police station which is still pending investigation. Mm -hmm. Then I and he were sent a mail by a person claiming to be the, claiming to be the uh, Secretary of some Leskar Taiba or something. Okay. Uh, we still reported, they thought that probably will be too afraid, but actually we went ahead and reported that also to the police. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things continue, but I don't think one should be cowed down by this and one should have the guts to face them. And uh, there should be a lot of praise for the APCR volunteers who are not advocates and who work on this uh, field uh, unafraid and with guts. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky that I'm an officer of the court and therefore I have some inbuilt protection. Okay. So, on all these cases, public Chinna Swami Blast case and this Bangalore assassination conspiracy case, uh, do you find uh, some sort of uh, same modus mode of operandi by the police or uh, in booking or picking up the youth and booking them, uh, cha charging them in these cases? See, it's a little uh, disconcerting, but the fact is that the Hubli terror case happened just before the previous elections mm -hmm. and uh, when Yadurappa, uh, the former chief minister of Karnataka, uh, was, had become a great dissenter, it is at that time that this new Bangalore terror case, so called Bangalore terror case was foisted. Mm -hmm. So one gets a feeling, though I don't have anything to prove, that this has some connection to the electoral things and polarization of votes. You see, both the Congress and the BJP uh, relish in the polarizing, uh, in polarizing the votes. Mm -hmm. The BJP polarizes in the name of uh, religion and the Congress says that, look, they are a danger and therefore they fool the Muslims on the basis that uh, uh, we are the only ones who can protect you. Mm -hmm. So both the political parties are hand in glove as far as uh, these cases are concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, I am also extremely critical of uh, uh, the fundamentalism that has 
uh, crept in into the uh, NGOs working for the Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to uh, ignore the fact that as much as the Muslims are uh, hunted down, uh, equally the Dalits and the Maoists are also, mm -hmm. and many innocent people are in jail. Mm -hmm. And the biggest bias within the security forces is against the women. Mm -hmm. So just to cry about uh, uh, bias against the Muslims is not the right thing. It's not the fair thing. True. All right. So you know, I was asking, like, uh, in the legal parameter of these cases, uh, Hubli, Chinna Swami, and this Bangalore recent Bangalore case. Like, uh, do you find any similarities between these cases? Oh, you see, there's a very standard procedure that is uh, followed. Almost all these cases will be based on confessional statements of some people, mm -hmm. and the 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 disquieting part is that the uh, uh, charge sheets typically begin with uh, uh, the accused persons belong to the uh, are, are, are belong to the Muslim community and they profess Islam as a faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it shows the uh, bias that has set in among uh, the entire police force with a few honorable exceptions and uh, some very good exceptions. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that bias is not going to help the cause and, and, and that bias is not only against the Muslims but it also goes against if you uh, if you look at what Naveen Suranjay has to had to say, the journalist who was in jail for a lot of time, uh, when he came out, he said that he saw a Dalit boy who was in jail because he had stolen a bucket for 75 rupees. Mm -hmm. So the biases are rampant. Mm -hmm. And if as long as we just continue to cry about bias against the Muslims, we will not reach anywhere. Okay. Bias is bias. Yes. So, sir, uh, regarding APCR activity in creating legal awareness, uh, among Muslims and other oppressed section of the society, uh, can you just give us brief? Uh, uh, can you explain us how you uh, take these activities in creating legal awareness? You see, we have got uh, a set of uh, uh, volunteers who the the typical workshop that is conducted is a, a one-day workshop. It uh, begins with an introduction to how the legal system uh, works in India. And then there are specific instructions given in view of the DK Basu judgment on what precautions should be taken when a person is arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, then it uh, typically uh, tells them about what the public distribution system is and how they can help the poor. Mm -hmm. And then we also teach them uh, the Right to Information Act uh, to ensure that there's right the uh, appropriate uh, Right to Information applications mm -hmm. so that we can get to the root of a lot of things and a lot of things can be solved. In addition, the most important part that uh, we do is we try and prevent the communal riots. Our volunteers are trained to keep their eyes open. And at the first sign that there are uh, chances that a communal riot could happen, we give representation to the deputy commissioner and the superintendents of police, mm -hmm. who by law are mandated to keep peace in the districts, mm -hmm. to take precautionary measures. So you will find that uh, uh, after 2008-2009, uh, by the grace of God, uh, very few communal riots have happened in India, despite it being in Karnataka, despite it being ruled by the BJP. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have taken uh, appropriate measures at the right time, given them representations, taken acknowledgments, and threatened legal action if they uh, don't take appropriate action. So that has been a very good thing. And uh, our volunteers now have the courage to uh, uh, give police complaints in case any. Uh, the uh, inflammatory speeches are given by any of the right-wing extremists. Uh, we, we don't uh, allow any of those things and we record and our belief is that the law should take its own course and we should fight it legally and properly. Hmm. So do you believe, sir, that uh, the, the legal awareness, the uh, knowledge of the constitution, the rights, uh, uh, li like will help our people to like uh, and will curb police from like indulging into uh, illegal detention and, and bogus arrest? You see, justice is the cornerstone of uh, having good relationship. Uh, my personal view is that the Muslims, uh, in addition to standing up for the for justice to Muslims, also need to stand up for ensuring that there is justice to the other weaker sections of the society. Mm -hmm. And the legal awareness, uh, we don't teach them about the constitution or any of those things. We simply tell them that look, if a person is arrested, these are the precautions that you need to take. These are the people whom you need to inform. Mm -hmm. This is how you should ensure that he is. Uh, uh, given a fair trial as soon as possible and uh, uh, as long as that happens I think uh, this country will be a good place to, to live in and people will have to stand up for their rights. Thank you for speaking. Thanks.